we're going to be talking about the biological effects of nuclear radiation. So we're going to talk about um, the effects of being exposed to the radiation and um, the sources and um, half-life of radiation. First of all, you may um, wonder where radiation comes from. And so we just learned last time that there's this um, something called an unstable um, radioisotopes or uh, in other words isotopes that uh, spontaneously undergo radioactivity and we learned that there's something about um, the proton or the, excuse me the neutron to proton ratio and if the neutron to proton ratio isn't uh, quite right those isotopes will spontaneously undergo radioactive decay so radioisotopes are uh, naturally found in the environment and they're also uh, human-made for medical, energy, and defense purposes. So there's um, two sources, either just naturally or human-made. Now, um, there is a certain amount of background radiation all the time. Um, you're never, not, ever exposed to uh, background radiation. Um, most of the background radiation, 82%, just comes from natural sources whereas only 18% comes from human-made sources. And the largest uh, source for background radiation is radon. Radon, if you might remember, well then, before I talk more about radon, I'll just tell you um, <clears throat> the other, uh, there's other also just from the land, um, cosmic radiation from um, outer space, mostly from the sun. Um, inside the human body, you're eating um, you know, different elements all the time, and some of them have some natural ice, uh, radioactive isotopes uh, mixed in with their natural abundance. And then the human-made sources, of course, some consumer products such as smoke detectors, um, nuclear medicine for um, either diagnostic or um, to treat diseases, and also just x-rays. All right, now radon, you may remember, um, is a natural decay product. It's right here from uranium-238. And uranium-238, of course, is found all over um, the Earth's crust. And as it naturally decays, it will decay to radon-222. I'll talk more about that towards the end of the second lecture, uh, what the problem is with radon-222. But the source is natural. Um, it's just part of the decay series of the uranium-238. Now, what does radiation do to you? Why, why is it something that we need to avoid? Well, um, nuclear radiation is what we call ionizing radiation. So the high energy alpha, beta, and gamma radiation can create ions by knocking electrons out of chemical bonds. For example, when the ionizing radiation collides with water molecule, it can cause um, one of the electrons on the oxygen atom to um, break off, leaving this, um, whoops, I didn't draw that very well. Um, oops, <laughs> having problems. Um, draw, or it leaves a, what's called a free radical, which is an unpaired electron. So um, you may not remember, we'll talk more about this later, what water really looks like. Well, a model of water. And there's two um, pairs of electrons on the oxygen. So what happens is the ionizing radiation can knock one of these off leaving the water molecule looking like this, which is one electron instead of two. And that, just one unpaired electron, is called a free radical, and it's very reactive. Okay, so what happens then, uh, there's a lot of water in your body, this water molecule then is very reactive, so it could collide with another water molecule, kick out um, an electron, and so f on and so forth, um, until there's some sort of uh, important bond broken, for example, in, um, in, a, uh, in a DNA molecule or some other important uh, structural molecules, and then it's, it can cause tissue damage. The amount of damage is going to depend on how much uh, radiation um, it comes in contact with uh, the tissue in your body, or in plants as well, any kind of plant or animal that's exposed to radiation okay so it could have no effect all the way up to a kind of the same effect as a burn where bonds are broken um, so it can be dangerous so the types of units that are used to measure radiation there's two different types of units the curie 
is the type of unit that's used um, to measure how much radiation is coming off of a, of a radioactive sample. And one curie equals 3.7 times 10 to the 10th disintegrations per second. So it doesn't matter um, whether it's alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. It's what's counted um, on a scintillation counter per second. So it's, um, the one, however, that's used to, to detect biological effects is the sievert, SV. And this particular unit... Uh, relates to the amount of radiation energy that is absorbed by tissue. So a particular source can give off a lot of curies, but how much is absorbed by tissue is another uh, matter because uh, depending on the penetrating power of the uh, radiation. This, you're assuming there's nothing interfering between the detector and the sample. So alpha, beta, and gamma would just be measuring how much radioactive um, uh, energy is being given off, whereas in this case, it's how much is actually making it in, uh, to tissue, to damage tissue. Depends on the penetrating power of the radiation. So the physiological effects of a single dose, so this isn't over time, this is just like one shot deal. Um, the older unit that was used is the REM. We're not going to um, pay too much attention to that because the SV is the international unit now that everybody's um, using. And so very low uh, doses of radiation, there's no observable effect, all the way up to a greater than five SVs would cause death because so much of the um, chemical bonds in the tissue would be broken that normal biological processes could no longer occur. And then this low dose between 0.25 and 0.5 white blood cell count decreases slightly, so that means there's some kind of um, uh, immune response going on and um, up to uh, one to two, nausea, vomiting, loss of hair. This is where uh, you'll start seeing like radiation sickness, um, where people are physically ill from being exposed to high levels of radiation. Okay, so there's different ways of measuring um, the biological effects. Uh, this high dose radiation sickness is rarely ever observed. Okay. So if you look at the annual radiation dose and compare, uh, you know, how much background radiation is an average person exposed to, you can uh, read through this table carefully. It's also in your book if you're interested. Um, but you can see how much comes from the cosmic radiation, just building materials, um, rocks, food, fallout from nuclear weapons testing, um, medical, you know, everybody's getting dental x-rays uh, annually and whatnot, uh, airplane travel, and then other sources. The, uh, for this particular person, it was 3,581, and the U.S. annual average is 3,600, but it's not sieverts, it's micro sieverts. Okay, so it's micro sieverts. So that's um, micro is 3,600 times 10 to the negative 6 sieverts. All right. Uh, I thought one thing was interesting um, on this table. Let's see, I thought there was something about smoking somewhere, plane travel, other, oh, right here, smoke. If you smoke, add 10,000 micro servers uh, per, per year, all right? So this person was a non-smoker, but look at that, how much um, radiation, the worst thing you can do um, for yourself is to uh, smoke, all right? Anyway, so the average annual dose is 3,600 micro um, sieverts or SVs. And so if you compare that back to the physiological effects, it's, it's, this again is just um, SVs. So this would be um, the same as 0 0.0036 SVs uh, per year. So the background, the, the long and short of this uh, story here is the background radiation, this is the average annual background radiation, is less than um, an observable effect in a single dose. Okay, so most people are not affected by this background radiation at all. Okay, so that's the, um, the story there. In the next part of this video, we're going to look at, um, you know, how, why some, it's worse to be exposed to some types of nuclear uh, radioisotopes than others.